Most people don't know that the Branch Davidians made a videotape <coughs> while they were under siege inside Mount Carmel, while they were surrounded by tanks and armored personnel vehicles and uh, the, the, the might of the establishment that was reigned against them. You can see their wounds and listen to them in their own voice, tell why they're there and what they're doing and why they're not going to come out. <coughs> the American public was never supposed to see this videotape. It was made by the Branch Davidians for the FBI to prove that nobody was being held in there against their will like the FBI was telling the world. Remember they said Koresh is holding them all hostage and won't let them come out? Well, that's a lie. And it's about two hours long. And all of the Branch Davidians who are alive at that point, including the children, get in front of the camera and tell their story. Able to answer my question 
um, things that I wanted to know. And in coming over here, things were brought to my attention. I could see things more clearly. It was a shock at first for someone to show you something which you've been looking for all your life. But then again, it was also nice to know that you found someone who could reveal these things. Okay, it sounds kind of strange, I'm sure, to most people to even hear something like that. Um, so what have you thought of the, the events of just as of recently, some of the things that have been taking place, like a week ago or Sunday, for instance? Do you have a reaction to that or in response to that also or in relation to that? Do you want to make a statement about leaving or staying? Do you want to leave? No, I'm here with my own free will. So are we holding you? Am I or no, David or anybody no, else no, holding you? No one's holding me here. It's my choice to be here. I decided to be here. I wanted to be here. We realized also that man has uh, made boundary lines all over this globe called an earth and uh, has uh, divided it up. But we believe, according to Psalms 50, don't we, that God owns all things? Exactly. Okay, so again, you want to be here then, and you're here on your own free will. Do you want to add anything to that, Marge? Well, the incident which happened last week, Sunday, was a shock. Um, when you see these things on the television, you can walk away from it, but when you're actually on the scene when an incident happened, it's frightening to know one minute you're looking out of the window seeing three helicopters and the next minute you hear firing and you're on the floor with um, bullet shells flying all over your head. It, it's frightening. And also having tanks around the building, which I don't think is necessary. Okay. Anything, uh, if this was to go back to Britain, this tape, or any parts of it, or to the press, is there anything else you might want to add or to say? It's my family, my friends, and unknown friends, and new friends that I might be making, um, that I'm fine, as they can see, because yeah. of my free will. I am happy with the people who I am with, as you can see. Um, What I'd like to say about the press is some of the things that they are hearing are not the truth. And I hope with this video being made that and things that are about to happen that people will see and know the truth. Okay, is, did you want to add anything else? Or is that about it? Okay, thank you, Marge. Thank you. It's here now that wants to share a few things, and we will put her on. And what is your name? My name is um, Judy Schneider Koresh. I'm with my daughter, Mina. And um, as you can see, I was wounded when the ATF came in and assaulted us. I was quite surprised to see our government act the way it did, in that David went to the door with his hands up and said, don't shoot, there's women and children in here. And yet they opened fire and fired at everyone here. It's just amazing. I don't really expect anyone to jump on our bandwagon right now and believe what we believe after just hearing little bits and pieces. I've been in the message since 1986, studying with David and just learned so many astounding things. I just think now we need to sit back and see what, what really is going on in our government. That's the whole thing that we're upset with right now. and We're waiting on God for an answer about what we should do. Uh, can I see a, a close-up of your finger? If you'll hold it still, let me zoom yeah, in on your finger. They tell me. Okay, don't move it now. Hold it right there. I will uh, try to see if I can focus it in a little better than what I have it to this point in time. Okay. Okay. Uh, what happened there with your finger? You were just sitting there. I was told you were nursing the baby or a, one of the babies or what was it? Yeah, I was just sitting there with my hands sort of like this and bullets were coming in our window. A lot of our clothing was damaged from bullets and I'm glad we weren't more than this. That's but, a very fat finger you have there. Yeah, it's kind of swollen. I just spoke to a doctor on the phone. He said it's quite dangerous. He thought I should come out and get treatment, but I asked him why doesn't he come in here because I don't 
really trust what they might do out there as far as were you a person hostage were you hurt any other place or did you have any other injuries? right this i was sitting here kind of like i don't i'm not exactly sure it happened so fast but at any rate it it went up this finger into my hand and out my shoulder okay uh what brought you here in the first place to waco texas to study with david Okay, and a, a question that everybody wants to know, do you want to leave? Are you being held here against your will? Do you, uh, uh, I, I want to leave when God says go, but um, no, I don't want to go out there on my own without David and everyone else, the rest of my family. Mm -hmm. and we're all family. So no one's holding here, you here against your will? No one would be holding anyone here against you. Okay, it. were you able to see a video that uh, the agency sent to us uh, showing some of the children that were at the at their facility, that wherever they're at? The video we saw today of them running around crazily, eating candy, drinking soda pop, jumping around like wild maniacs, uh, watching videos. and. Yeah, we were all quite upset to see our children behave like that because they've always been well-mannered and disciplined and they don't eat candy in between meals and only on rare occasions. It's not good for your teeth or health or anything. So you see that as being a, a cause of a hyperactivity in children, something right. they already we, don't I mean, need. we love the kids. They can't help the way they're being cared for. And I guess that's the only thing that people out there really know. Do. Is there anything else you might have to say to the American people or to anybody that's on the outside, your your family maybe, your friends? Well, I love you, Mom, of course, you know that. And I love all my family, and I just hope everyone doesn't jump to making decisions with, before they've heard our side, because right now all you're hearing is the press. You're hearing a very perverted press. They're not allowed to uh, broadcast live. It has to be taped, and it has to be... Um, cut out and change stories all, all kinds of lies i mean like the lady holds up a bullet this is what the atf used and this is what we use i'm like wow i never saw one of those before <laughs> like, i mean it's so many lies so many lies they change your stories all the time you just need to trust god i mean trust god read your bible know what you're talking about what are you doing with your life what do you do every day with your life is it something god approves of I mean, before you judge us, make sure your own life is clean. Would you want your life um, broadcast from the day you were in high school, what you did, who you went out with? Um, you know, I mean, we're, we're being stripped naked, so let's make sure when that happens to you, you're ready, too, to meet God. Is there any final comments you'd like to make? Um, I thought that was it. Okay. <laughs> Well, thanks much. Uh, what about what about Mina? Does she Mina, want to say you anything? Want to say hello to your grandma, grandpa, and your aunt too. They, they too. They see you too. Wave. Okay, thank you. We'll go on to someone else. Thanks. Ladies with me, and we'll start out by finding out what their names are, and we'll start with uh, the one on the far left. And what is your name? My name is Lisa. And how old are you, Lisa? Thirteen. Thirteen. And who's next to you? I'm Abby. And how old are you, Abby? I'm eleven. You're eleven. And who else do we have here? I'm Rachel, and I'm thirteen. You're thirteen, and? Audrey, and I'm thirteen. And you're thirteen also. Uh, of course, as everyone else, we've asked, why are you here? And we'll start again with Lisa. Lisa, what brings you here to Texas? Well, my dad and mom... My dad and mom brought me here when I was really little. When you were young? Yeah, I was young. So you, you, weren't, you didn't really come here by choice then, per se, did you? Mm -hmm. But now that you're... How old are you again? 13. 13 years old. Do you, would you like to leave? Mm -hmm. You don't want to leave? Uh, even though there are all these events that have been taking place with uh, the gunfire and the possibility of uh, more, and not knowing what's going on, you still don't want to leave? Are you being held against your will? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Okay. What about Abby? Abby, what are you doing here? What brought you here? Well, I came here with my grandma when I was about when you were about five and have you left since then at all have you been have you gone away to get to visit yes i have okay so do you want to leave now if, if you were given the opportunity to leave now would you like to leave yes 
No. You sure? Yeah. Is anyone here holding you against your will? No. No one is. Okay, is there anything you would like to say to your grandmother on the outside or anyone else? Not really. Okay. And next we have Rachel. Rachel, uh, tell us something about your arriving here. Have you been here for a while? Yeah, I've been here since I was five years old. It was about five? Mm -hmm. And you've had opportunity to leave, have you? Well, yeah. I mean, I've always been told if I want to leave, I can leave, but, you know, I've never wanted to. Why not? Well, because, you know, I, I like it here, have friends here, and plus there's a truth that... You know, David teaches the seven seals, and he can reveal it, and there's no one else so far, you know, that I've heard of that can do that. And so I've just decided to stay here and listen. So then what you're saying is it's because of his ability to open up the Bible, of which uh, we all see that there are almost two billion people in the world that claim to be Christians and claim that that's their foundation also. So you see that he has an ability that so far others haven't shown. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. I know I'm asking someone of a leading question because I know that you all are a little bit camera shy. Uh, what about you, Audrey? What brings you here? Um, I came here when I was seven years old. And my grandma brought me here. And I was too little to understand anything, but now since I'm getting older, I can understand more. And it's, you know, truth so far as in, you know, I've never heard anybody else tell the truth, you know, like... Okay, like David apparently is what you were thinking, huh? Okay, let's see. So uh, another few questions we've asked everybody. Uh, is there anything you want to say to friends or family or anywhere else? Or do you want to... Okay, I don't want to have anything to say. You don't have anything else to say? Uh, Really? Okay, what about you, Audrey, Abby, or Lisa? Anything else you want to say? Hi. Okay, hi. Well, what I don't understand is how, you know, people don't want to listen to the seals and everything because it's so plain and clear that, you know, they just don't want to listen. I don't understand that. So you're wondering why more people aren't interested in the Bible and it being unlocked? Is that what you're saying? And to see what's for us for the final days? Okay, I understand. Anything else? I guess that'll do. Okay, well, thank you, girls. Else here, and we'll ask for you to identify yourself. What is your name, please? My name is Lorraine Sylvia. Lorraine Sylvia, do you also have a family here or a partial family, or what can you tell me about that? Yes, I do. Um, I have a daughter here, Hollywood. Okay. And I have uh, my son I sent out. And what is his name? His name is Joshua. So, Joshua, have you been able to see anything or, or hear anything of Joshua as a recent? Uh, well, when we first sent him out, he was able to call up that night to, just to tell me he had arrived. And uh, then today I saw a videotape of him. And uh, I've got to tell you, I was not impressed. Why were you not impressed with the videotape? Well, they had all the children in a room, and the kids were all going wild and jumping around, and it was like they had no discipline, no correction. And we just don't do that with our kids here, you know? Okay. Uh, the kids are supervised all the time, and, you know, our kids will go into a Bible study, they'll sit for hours quietly and peacefully. And when I saw this video, they, they were acting like wild animals. Okay, so that, that bothered you then. Okay. Uh, why are you here in the first place? Well, uh, eight years ago, David came to my home in Massachusetts, and he was presenting Bible studies to my family. And I just saw that he had something. He was able to take uh, all the books of the Bible and harmonize them, uh, line upon line, precept upon precept, and it made sense. It was something when you read it yourself, you couldn't see it. But once he showed it to you, it was readily understood. There was just no debating it. Okay. Do you have a desire to leave here? No. You I have don't. no desire to leave. And nobody is holding a gun at my head to make me say that. No one's okay, going. so no one's holding you back, keeping here, threatening you, or no. anything else? If God says to wait, then I tend to wait. 
All right. And what? And a lot of people have said that, but what do you mean if God says to wait? Is God talking to you or something? No, uh, God does not talk to me. The, um, the book of Revelation shows that God has a book in his hand, and he hands that book to someone. He hands it to the Lamb. He's the only one that can reveal the book. God does speak to someone, and David has shown me the seal. So. David, God says, wait. I've trusted in him this long. He's proven himself to me. I'm going to win. Okay, I see. Uh, also, would you say to family elsewhere or friends, or do you have any statements to make uh, about the incident that happened uh, maybe 10 days ago? Anything you'd like at all. It doesn't even have to be that. Okay, anything. first, uh, the incident is just a total outrage. Why is that? I, I don't know how the American people can stand by and watch such a thing take place. We have people out here, we have all these people, women, children, tiny babies. These men came in here and they started firing on us. The boats came through the walls and people were killed, people were injured. And it, this is America. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to say or add? Uh, to my family, I love them. Please take Joshua. Thank you. We're going to go over here now, and we're going to ask someone else sitting close by here her name and where she's from. My name is Kathy Schroeder. I'm originally from Florida. Okay, you're from Florida. Kathy, what brings you here in the first place? A few years ago, I met yourself, Steve Schneider, and my husband and I. We were in Miami, Florida, and we found revealing truth in the Bible that we just could not just repute at all. There was no way. We eventually came and met David Koresh and found that he was doing the opening up of these truths and have stayed to listen to everything we could. And everything, like Larry said, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. The whole Bible, every book of the Bible, tells the same prophecy, tells the same thing. And I wouldn't know that were it not for David Koresh. Okay. So, do you have a, also any children, or where's your family? I have four children, three by an ex, and one from my late husband, Mike Schroeder. They are not here with me right now. Um, the incident that happened Sunday that nerve-wracked everybody, I mean, women and children were in our homes, just totally shocked with barrage of weaponry fired upon our home. Of course, me and the children all got down and we all safely made it through that original gunfire, but it scared me too much to allow them to stay here. So my children have been released. They are out. And I found out today that the three that do belong to my, are psycho physiologically my exes, children he has custody of them now i found that out today and what about my your fourth, he turned three sunday he's the youngest he is still in state custody as far as i know why and did you send you you said you sent your children off so that you thought they might have a better chance of survival is that the idea physical survival yes they have tanks aimed in our faces every day we are worried there's no telling what the federal agents out there will do based on what they've already done. So for their physical lives and, and their well-being, I sent them out there. Well, what about your own life and your own physical well-being? Don't you want to be with your children? Yes, I would much rather my children be here with me. But I would not like to be out there because I know that what I'm doing here is for a reason. God said to wait. The God that I believe in, the God that David Kirsch has shown me that sits on a throne, that has a book in his hand, read Revelation, it's all right there. It's so plain and simple. If you've got somebody to show it to you, which took me a lot of years to finally find, and once I did, there's no, there's no disagreement at all to say that that's not what's in the book. So you don't, you don't want, is anyone holding you here against your will, Kathy? Only God. Only God. Only God. It's His will and His will be done. Okay. Uh, what Did you see the videotape of your children today? Yes, I viewed that videotape. I was a little disappointed in a couple of my children jumping on couches and making silly faces and just 
really going crazy. Had they been in my possession, had I been with them at the time, they would not have acted so radically. Is that to say they're not allowed to have fun? Or? I, no, no. My children have fun, but they were they were quite undisciplined, un unsupervised at that time. At the time that video was taken. And that's not, not something that you would like to see then. No, my okay. children are constantly um, doing schoolwork when they're with me. They're constantly working and playing. Well, when it's supervised, when it's well supervised, they do a lot of playing. They do a lot of exercise, but not jumping on couches and tables like I saw my young daughter doing today. Would you like to see this all resolve, the situation, or maybe back to as it was? What are your thoughts about that? What do you mean as it was? Well, about 10 days ago, you we were all coming together studying the Bible. It was uh, things as usual. Before, before the ATS got involved. Right. Okay, yes, I would love to see the situation resolved. I would love to have my children back, and I would love to have my ability to worship God in the way that I feel I want to worship God, which is our American right. I would love to have that back. But as it stands right now, I can't worship God the way I want to. They're taking that from me. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Um, one more thing I would like to tell the public, if they can and find this out, that I am really tired of the lies. I'm really tired of hearing the stories federal agents have told the public. Seems as how we have no press coverage directly from this facility, from our church. We have no one telling the world our side. And I am watching on and listening on the radio, watching on the news reports, the press conferences, watching the lies that the federal agents have told. It's astounding day after day how far they go. And that's just one agency. All the other agencies back there are going to back them up. That's including our federal government. We, the people, don't run this government anymore. We, the people, don't run this country. They do. And they tell all the lies they want. And I'm just... But do you think all of these men are like that? Don't, do you not see that there might be some sincere that are trying to do their best from their vantage point? Those that are trying to do their best are trying to do their job. They have a family back home, too. But they don't understand what the system is doing. If they did, they would speak out against it. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Just that I love my family, and I hope that my ex does try to get custody of my youngest child, Brian. That's very important to me. And that the children know that God does control the situation. No matter what happens, God is in control, and I believe that totally. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. I have someone else here now. May I ask you your name? My name is Teresa. And where are you from, Teresa? I'm from England. You are. What brings you over to America, of all places, here in oh, Texas? Well, about four years ago, um, I was seeking truth about the Bible. I was wondering why we have a Bible that we don't understand, you know. So I started inquiring, and one day found someone up to talk about this, and they told me someone was coming over from America, and we arranged to meet. <coughs> That person, which was Steve, which was you, Steve, and we had a study, and you, it wasn't so good at first, but I continued, and then I found that a few of my questions was being answered, and I continued, and then when I met David Koresh, um, he's answered all my questions, and there's no no doubt about the truth that we we are missing. We were missing before. We met you and David. <coughs> okay, so that's what brought you over here to Waco, yeah. Texas, of all places, to hear more. Um, there's been a lot of rumors and statements over the press that you're being held here against your will, and yeah. is that true? Or what that's do you have to say? not true. I have made my decision to come here because I have been shown the, the prophecies and um, we are looking forward to the truth being revealed to the world and that's why we come here to study as much as we can so that we can also help others in the world to know this truth okay so you have a, a vision of things better maybe an eternal vision that you've caught that's is that right. what you're saying okay 
did you get to see your daughter on the tape that was sent? Yeah, I saw my daughter. I wasn't very happy. They Why were, not? They weren't supervised at all. They were just allowed to just do what they liked. They seem to be eating continuously and drinking. We don't do that. You mean you're on some kind of a program or a yeah, schedule for those things? Yeah, they eat every four hours to five hours, and they don't eat and drink cokes and lots of sweet things, you know, not all the time. They have some now and again, but all those cokes would make them very hyper, jumping about, not even realizing what they're doing. Okay, were you happy to at least see your daughter? Did they make what? an attempt at least to give you an opportunity to see Yeah, her? I was grateful that they allowed us to see those children because we miss them so much. Okay. Um, is there anything you'd like to say to friends or family abroad or anywhere else? To my family and friends, I'd just like to say I'm fine. I know that you're all worried about us. I'd just like to know that we are fine right now. And uh, everything in the hands of God right now, and we're just waiting on God. Whatever happens, we know <clears throat> it's, it's the way that God wants it to be. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add? I'd like to say that um, if they could, before the children are sent to their um, families, I'd like them to to try to have some more control over them, to direct them if they're doing something wrong, correct them, you know, while they're in their care. Okay. Is that the final thing? Thank you, Teresa. Okay, Sita. I gave your name, of course. Is that, is that is your name, I would believe? Yes, uh, it's really for Sita Rivera Sanobi. Okay. And where are you from originally? I'm originally from the Philippines, but I came to United States in 1966, 68. And your home most recently up My home is recently from Hawaii, Oahu. Okay. okay. And what brings you to Waco, Texas? <laughs> I was, uh, I didn't come for the trip. I didn't know anything about it. I came with my husband and I always sat in the back for two, three years. And as I listening to it, it got my ear ringing. It did. So you you didn't even come here then to want to know the Bible or interest in God or no, anything never. to do with something religious then? No, never. Uh -huh. Okay, but now, what about now? Is anyone holding your, against your will? Do you want to leave? What is, what is your desire? Nobody's holding my will or anybody. So you're here by choice still? Yes. You don't want to leave then? No. But I want my kids back here. What I saw on that film, I wasn't very happy about it. So you weren't either. I would imagine it's going to be the same thing that we've been hearing about the re response to the children. Yes, they haven't been directed. They haven't been, the way I saw on that film, they haven't been supervised or anything. I really appreciate it. Uh, they made that effort to take their pictures and video them, but what I saw, I wasn't... I was more upset than uh, before. Have you learned anything from the Bible about how parents and children should be, the relationship, and does it seem to work? Um, it works with my kids. There are times I, I slack, but they're beautiful kids, all of them. In fact, for those that are listening, whoever has children, we've learned from the book, especially the book of Proverbs in the Bible, is right. Mm -hmm. How one should be with their children and how there should be a consistency, a constant love and caring shown to the child. One should never hit or use the hand on a child. No. They, it should always be for hugging and loving. And one should always uh, stay with that program so that the child knows and learns exactly what to expect. Is that true? Yes. Is there anything else you might want to add or say to family, friends, or anything else? Uh, I want to say to the children, I love you all. I will miss you. Uh, remember what we taught you and how you guys eat, your eating habits and everything. You're not supposed to eat when you're eating. You're not supposed to what? Uh, eat, eating water. But while oh, you're drinking eating, water. Drinking water. Okay. Okay, anything else? No. Okay. I just hopefully um, that we wrote that their relatives will inquire for them or the families 
we'll go to them, whoever we wrote on those papers. Okay. Thank you, Sita. You're welcome. Do you want to have something to say to her children? Angelica, Crystal, I love you very much. And the rest of you, Janessa, Natalie, you're the oldest of, in that group. Behave and take care of those kids. Okay? Love you all. And what might your name be? Yvette. Yvette. And Yvette, where are you from? England. England. As uh, with everyone else, we've been asking the same question. What brings you over to Waco, Texas? Long story. Long story. Um, my husband was in college in England. All right. Um, a guy by the name of Steve Schneider came over to England. He was giving some Bible story um, studies. My husband went to the studies without my knowing, my aunt. And um, I later found out what was going on. When my husband finished his studying, he came over to the States without me because I was pregnant at the time. Um, possibly a year later, I, I came to the States to inquire what was going on. Then I got the truth too. I, I accepted the, the truth, what was being taught, which basically were tied up all the prophecies of the Bible together, showing me things that the Adventist Church never showed me. I was in there for 10 years. I was seeking truth. They had nothing to tell me. We were going to um, college to be ministers and ministers' wives, yet we had nothing to teach the people. How far did your husband advance in, in the college as to degrees? Well, as far as the world is concerned, he advanced. As far as God is concerned, he stayed where he was when he went to the church. I was told he had a master's degree. Oh, yeah, he's got a master's degree. Did he, he also sure become a, a minister for that denomination? He sure did. Okay. But they didn't want to know what he had to say. All right. As soon as he started teaching the truth of the Bible, which they came to believe, basically they kicked him out. Do, Yvette, do you want to leave here? What? And are you uh, also being forced against your will to stay here, keeping you from leaving? Hey, listen, I came here freely. I'm a free agent. I came by myself. I paid my own way. I came and I went as I pleased, and I've decided to stay as I please. My family know where I am. They know I'm independent. I never do anything they want anyway. Basically, all I've said to them is, look, I'm old enough to take care of myself. As long as your support is me, means that's all I need. Okay. And what about your children? Where are they right now? My children are out there. Where? Wherever. Okay. Out there in the world. Because of the um, event of Sunday the 28th. Um, two days after my son's fourth birthday. Do you miss your children? Well, A, I'm a mother. Okay. I miss my kids. I love them very much. Well, they were alive for six years. They were nice enough to video some of the children. Did you get to see yours? Yeah. And the hardest hair was cut. They didn't have permission to touch him. I was furious when I saw him. Okay. And Renee looked sad. I know she wasn't happy because the picture she was forcing a smile. Also. The treatment, the behavior of the children on the video was very bad. They were given things that they didn't normally eat that makes them very hyperactive. They were eating whatever they wanted, when they wanted. They were sat in front of the cheap television. There were, as far as I was concerned, there was no constructive um, supervision of the children. And um, the other thing was, I was just upset about seeing the kids. I didn't want them out there in the first place. I sent them out there because I thought they would die in this place because of the way those people came in here and shut up my bedroom and everything else with three children in my room. So I sent them out there for safety, but basically they would have been better off here. Even if they died here, they would have been safer than being in the hands of Babylon. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to say to I just want to say to my family, hey, you know me, I do my own thing. Even if I die, you know I love you very much. And I'm not going to die in vain as long as you believe in what I believe in. Okay, is that it?
Thank you, Abad. To remind the children about the story of Daniel and um, his three friends in Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Okay, kids, remember what happened. Those guys were taken into Babylon against their will. They didn't eat at the king's table. They didn't touch the king's wine. They ate what they knew God wanted them to eat. And God gave them the blessing. God worked through those three children. And so remember, God can work through you too. You're out there for purpose, kids. Don't forget Revelation 4 and 5, whatever you do, okay? Okay, and what is your name, may I ask? Doris Fagan. Doris Fagan. Doris, where are you from? England, Nottingham. Nottingham, England. What brings you over to Waco, Texas? Well, I've been in the Adventist Church for at least five, six years. And uh, studying my Bible and the teaching that they gave me in the church is two different things. Okay. And I was told that there's somebody here to open the Bible. And I was very much interested to know. So I come over to here. And I was amazed for what I heard. For I've been carrying the Bible and don't know what's in it until when I get here. Okay, and it's uh, the rumor has gone around over the radio and the airwaves that you're being held against your will. Do you have a desire to leave? Would you like to leave? No. No. I'm, not, I, I, I'm here because I want to, to be here. You're here because you want to be here? Yes. So you want to continue to learn? Of course. It is very important for people to hear what you've got to say. More than trying to put his word on or to kill him, which it is not right before God, because he's not doing things which is wrong. He's doing the right. He's trying to save souls. And I'm introducing them to listen to what he's got to say. Is there anything else you'd like to say to friends, family abroad or elsewhere? Well, my family in England, don't mourn for me, I'm all right. I'm alive, I'm not dead. I'm serving a true and living God that sits on the throne. And if you do so, you can't die. So, don't mourn. God sits on the throne. Anything else? Okay, thank you. We have over here right next to you, and what is your name? Annette Richards. And where are you from? Originally, I'm from Jamaica, but I reside in Canada for a while. Okay. And what brings you here to Waco, Texas? Well, I was in the Adventist Church for over 30 years, and I watched the church go down. Down how? Down, take a downhill, downhill trend. The moral and everything has you mean been it's, You're down. saying it's moral? Yes. Okay. And the, the, the standard has been very low. And um, I cried to God because I said there must be something better than this uh, in religion. So I heard about uh, Mr. Koresh who can open the seven seals. And I have been reading Revelation and did not understand. I kept asking about the seals and I was told that Revelation is a closed book and will only be open in the end of time. I look around and I can see, well, if this is not the end of time, I don't know when. So when I heard that he can open the seven seals, I was so anxious to get here to listen to him. When I came and heard him expound the word, I was convinced that he is a man of God and that he really is the one sent to open the seals. That's why I'm here. So you haven't been disappointed from the answers? No. I'm okay. very happy I'm here. Would you like to leave and are you being held against your will to leave? Oh no, if I wanted to go I could have gone a long time. Okay, so no one's holding you against your will no today? No one's holding me against my will. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you might want to add to family, friends, yes, or any other I comments? Yes, I would like to tell my family and friends in Canada and also Jamaica that I'm alive and well, and I'm happy. I believe it is the safest place to be on earth right now. I'm here for the word of God for the seven seals, and it is my greatest desire for them to open their eyes, open their ears, and listen, and I would be happy if they could be given the opportunity 
to listen to the scene because it's all a lie. Okay. All well, lie. Thank you very much. Okay. This is Daryl. This is my two-year-old son. And your name? Nicole. You're Nicole. Uh, Nikki, where are you from? I'm from Australia. And what brings you to America? Well, um, I came here to study the, the Seven Seals. Um, David came over to Australia, and I wish that my whole family was in the truth, but they left. When you say, see, people that might be listening might not understand cliches that religious groups use like truth or seven seals. So uh, you came here to see and understand something which you thought might be the truth. Is that it? Yes. Okay. Have you been disappointed? Not at all. I've seen things I've, I haven't seen before. Every question I've ever had has been answered. And I, I've seen the whole book, the Bible open. Every question I've taken to scholars, they have not been able to answer. And even before you came to hear David here and to sit down and study with him, did you have opportunity to go to any institutions of higher learning before this? I was in a college doing a diploma, and I did have questions that I did take to theologians, and none of them could answer my questions. So it was a religious college? Yes, it was. Okay. Um, do you have any desire to leave here, and are you being held against your will to do so if you did? I am not being held against my will. I desire to stay here. I do not want to leave. Um... Nikki, I know that uh, you mentioned that you wanted to uh, say a few words because of, an, uh, because of an incident that happened about 10 days ago, with, uh, which, happened, which uh, now left you without a brother. Did you want to say anything about that, it would seem? Um, I'm, I'm very disappointed, um, the whole incident, um, DAPS came in and they shot my brother, he, they left his body, they wouldn't take his body out and bury it, he's been buried out the front of the property now. I mean, I thought this was the country of, you know, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, whatever, and just human decency, it just doesn't seem to exist. Um, Is there anything you want to say other than that to those that might be watching, viewing, or to family, friends, anywhere? I'd like to say to my mom, Marlene, Mom, I know you don't understand this, and I know you're going to be heartbroken, but please, you always told me not to judge, and that's what I want to say. In the end, you will understand everything. Anything else, Nikki? Okay, thank you. Just with us, and what might your names be? Melissa. And your? Melissa. Melissa. And Rose and Melissa, you two seem to be the two controversial persons that uh, the agency wanted to know about because they believe that you, Melissa, wanted to leave and you were being kept against your will. Maybe we should get into that first. So, Rose and Melissa, uh, what was that all about the other night? Well, Dick, uh, FBI or DHCF agent phoned here and he wanted the child to leave. And he was speaking to Melissa. And Melissa told him that she'd leave on a condition. And, was, you know, and that he was speaking to her and he was prompting her and telling her to tell me that I'm a fair, that she wants to go, she wants to attend her friends. Which, uh, you know. I can hardly hear you. I hope that it comes across on the uh, camera. Is that him? Yes. So anyway, let's ask the question to Melissa. Melissa, do you want to leave here? No. You don't? Are you sure? Did you uh, tell Dick on the phone, though, that you would leave if a, they allowed a Robert Gonzalez? Do you remember that name, Robert Gonzalez? They asked you if uh, David could talk to him. Then they asked you, would you leave then? And what did you say? Yeah. But uh, what about now? Do you want to leave now? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Is anybody, is your mom holding you against your will right now? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. You're positive you want to stay here? Yeah. I don't know what else we can say or how we can ask it, but if, if you want to leave, we would let you leave. Do you think that's true? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what do you have to say about that, Rose? Well, that's true. She tells me earlier that she doesn't want to leave. She doesn't want to leave me, but she wants to leave the country. Okay. Well, I can understand that. Right. Especially in, re in relation to what's all
all happened here very recently. Um, so why did you come here again in the first place, uh, Rose? Well, it's a long story, but I'll be brief. Yeah, okay, um, as brief as possible. <laughs> well, say, a couple of years ago, um, well, I was raised in religious belief, and I didn't think religion had much to offer, not when you read the Bible. And um, a friend of mine came to my home and said that there's someone that can show you these things in the Bible, it's been a lot of days, all prophecy will be able to be understood. And I thought, well, I thought I'd go and listen anyway. And so, since that day I've been here. And I've not been disappointed with what I've heard. Okay. Uh, do you want to leave yourself? No. Are you being held against your will? Of course not. Of course not. Okay. Uh, so the reason you stay then is what are you is there some reason why you're staying here even in the uh, very for the very reason that there there could be harm to your own person and to your daughter why would you even chance something like that well there's no harm here the reason why I stay here is like before about someone that can open up prophecies things that have happened here it's in the book there's no reason to be like why haven't you walked out already what are you waiting for Okay, well the person who showed me these things said wait and also we can see the events that are taking place of uh, these are the performance of what's been shown already, so I don't want to leave right now. Okay. And we also today have another group with us, but I guess it doesn't appear like they're all here, so we'll just uh, wait a moment, just a second. Here, and it appears to be a family, and where is this family from? I'm from England. You're from England, yes. and what is your last name? Henry. Henry, would you like to give your first name, starting with the young lady to the far left, your right? Diana. Diana? I'm Phil. I'm, I'm, I'm Paulina. I'm Stephen. I'm Vanessa. Villa. And what brings you, all the way from England, a nice lovely home of which I've seen and been in, what brings you to America, to a place called Waco, Texas, or Waco, Waco, Texas? Anybody want to speak first? No. I've always wanted. I've always wanted to know to understand the Bible, and I wanted to know about the seven seals. And I met somebody who can show me the seven seals. I have my pastors, my ministers. I was, I was a former Seventh-day Adventist. Nobody could show me, and now I found what I've been looking for. So you haven't been even slightly disappointed? Not at all. Have you asked the hardest questions that you ever possibly could ask in regards to anything religious? I have, and they couldn't tell me anything. They couldn't. They just kept saying it's wrong, it's wrong, but they couldn't tell me where it was wrong. Have you ever had anybody, or have you ever seen in your experience in the past few years, anybody controvert what this man that you say can do this has? Not at all. I have tried myself. Nobody has at all. Okay, the rumor has been that you're being held against your will. Does anyone here want to leave, and are you being held against your will? No, 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 way. no way. No way. And what is your choice then? What would you like to do as of uh, leaving or staying? I'd like to stay, as long as he says to stay, I'll stay. And, okay, go ahead. As far as I'm concerned, I ain't going nowhere. I'm staying right here because I believe that where I am is the right place and that, you know, we're a family here and, you know, I really like it here. I know that I'm not going to leave here just now. I'd like to say, too, that I know the people in England, they thought that I was forced into being here, and that is not true at all. This is my own choice. I've wanted to stay here. I've come here and I've wanted to stay here. And this is where I want to be and I don't want to leave. Okay. This is a life and death situation, and I want to live eternally. And I would like I would like my sisters, my mom and my friends not to worry about us because we are okay. And I wish when this is revealed that they would listen to and they take heed. Okay, so this seems to be a very important issue to you that you're being over here and you're hearing and seeing the Bible. Mm -hmm. So you're looking to something other than what the world might understand, to things that you don't see with your physical eyesight. Yeah, that's okay. Right. Uh, is there anything else anyone would like to say in regards to family, to friends, or about any other issues? Well, I'd like to say that um, I know that there's a lot of my friends in England who are uh, probably about, worried about what, um, what I'm doing here. But I'd like them to know that I'm fine, um, things are going to be alright, and I'll see them again one day. 
Do you hold any animosity or anything against anybody anywhere? No, 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 no. Okay. Anything else you might want to add? I'd like to say um, hello to my grandma and I'd like to tell you not to worry. Um, you know, I'm not held here as a hostage or anything. If any of us wanted to leave, we can just go now today. You know, you, go, you know we've been back and forth here freely. I'd just like to tell you not to worry and that I will see you soon. Okay. We've all three more agents, yeah. Okay. Anything else? I just want to say that Mr. Kirsch has been the most intelligent person I've ever met. He's nothing like what the media reports him to be. So you would wish that and you desire that they would even have an open access to being able to ask any kind of question of any subject matter? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well maybe someday that will be able to be happening, I don't know. I'd also like to say um, to my friends that um, a lot, a lot of you know that I approach your inscriptions and none of you could show me anything. You know that I approach the ministers and I'd like to say if, um, keep an open ear. You know, if you, when scriptures are, when you're given, when you're given the opportunity to listen and keep an open ear. Anything else? I'd like to say to Mr. Henry that what he's been saying should mix with error. But I wish he would listen at this time and uh, that he will find that there is truth in this message. Okay. Is that it? Thank you. Ophelia Santoya. And Ophelia, what brings you here to Waco, Texas? Well, I came, I, I heard about uh, this man that was uh, teaching the seven seals. And since I was uh, always looking for some more truth, uh, truth that uh, the church didn't have. And so you have found him to be able to open up much to you? Yes. Uh, it's been said that you're being held against your will, that you're not able to leave. Do you desire to leave? Or are you being held against your will? I'm, I'm, I have decided to stay. I don't, have, I don't want to go. So you're not being held against your will here? No. Uh, you also mentioned to me a little earlier that uh, you wanted to say something to your son who is not here, and what might that be? Oh, yes. Uh, I wanted to tell my son that I got his message and uh, not to worry because uh, these things have to happen. Remember that I taught, that I taught you that prophecies have to be fulfilled and the time has come. Okay. Is there anything else you might want to say to anyone else? Uh, also to my family in Mexico. Uh, they don't have to worry about because they know that these prophecies have to be fulfilled. And I want I want to send uh, some uh, uh, my love to them and uh, also my mother. And uh, I want them to read uh, Nahum. And the book of Nahum. Yeah, the okay. book of Nahum and Habakkuk, um, uh, Psalm 45, Isaiah 45. Okay. Thank you very much, Ophelia. My name is Derek Lovelock. And where are you from, Derek? I'm from England. What brings you here? Well, I hear there's a man that can open the book and reveal the seven seals. The book meaning the Bible? The Bible, yes. Have you been disappointed? No. Um, Have you done any other study of other denominations or religion in the world? Um, I was a Seventh-day Adventist for seven years. What were you before that? Um, that was the only religion I've been in. Okay. Do you want to leave here? No, I don't want to leave here. I'm, I feel quite safe here. And there's no reason for me to leave. Is someone holding you here against your will? No, nobody holding me against my will. Okay. Uh, also, it's been mentioned that uh, there's a number that would like to leave here. Or would you like to see this resolved peaceably? Yes, I would. And so your hope still is that it will be? Yeah, that is my hope. Have you noticed that to be the tenor and the attitude of those people that are here? Yes. Okay, we have, uh, we have not brought that issue up, so we should bring it up now. Uh, is there anything else you might want to say to family, friends, or um, anything? I'd just like to say um, hello to my family back in England, not to worry um, in, in the faith his hands I could ever be in. Um, and to tell them that this is the end time now, prophecies are being fulfilled as it's written in the Revelation. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, I just want to tell you that 
Um, I've been involved and seen a lot of religions, and they're all bogus, and they're all full of it. This is the truth. I know this is the truth. And for anybody that knows me, you know that I wouldn't be into something that I didn't think was right. And um, don't worry about me, because everything's going to be okay. So, are you today, being, real, real quickly, are you yeah. being held against your will? No, no, no. no. Uh, do you have a desire to leave here? No. no. You don't? Okay. No. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. I'm Scott Sanobi, and I'm not being here, held here against my will. I want my father, Ken Sanobi, in Honolulu to get my kids. If you're watching, I want you to have my two daughters, Angelica and Crystal Sanobi. And do you have a phone number you might want to give them again? It's 808-689-4457. Anything else you might want to say? Don't worry about me. I'm gonna, we're going to be just fine because God's in control. Okay, thank you, Scott. Thank you. Comment here because uh, we're, we're running out of time here. This is only an hour tape. This is Steve Schneider that has been filming, by the way. It's probably been quite obvious. Uh, the comment is that there are a lot more people that did want to talk. If I would have known that, I would have used a longer tape. So we might pick up on this a little later. Uh, many of the, the men here have not obviously come to the camera and spoken. Uh, there are still a number of others, but the overall tenor and the attitude is here is that people do not want to leave. No one is being held against their will. So we might get into uh, some other subject matters here in another day or two. So we'll be in touch, and we thank you for your patience, and we're trying to work this out with you and uh, we'll do the best we can. But remember, the God of David Koresh said wait, and that's basically what we're doing. Uh, not to be against or to offend anyone else or to slow down any process, but we do believe in a living God, as Revelation 7 shows. Thank you, and we will pass this on to you. Kathy back, and you wanted to make one final statement, and you didn't earlier because why? I didn't want to say anything earlier. I didn't have um, emotional composure. I want to just add one more thing, if I may. Bear with me. Okay, you've got seconds. Sunday, my husband was killed by ATF agents. I want everyone to know that that was totally against. He was just coming home to his family. Okay, we'll pass that on. Thank you. The date today is the 8th, which is Monday, the 8th of March. It is about 4.30 in the afternoon. David, anything you'd like to say? <laughs> First of all, I'd like to uh, thank the uh, negotiators that we've been discussing with on the phone. We're... Uh, finishing up on a very articulate portrait of what we perceive each of these fine gentlemen to be. I'd like to share with you uh, some of my family, seeing that, uh, of course, obviously everyone in the world knows something about it. And we just thought we'd kind of break the ice and allow people to see just exactly, you know, what kind of people we have here. I'd like to start off, first of all, with my oldest son. His name is Cyrus. Come sit over here, son. Uh, how old are you? Seven. Seven. Say hello to everybody. Hi. Where you at him? The camera right there. What do you think about all this, son? No. You don't know. You have faith in God? Yes. Okay. You want to wave to all your friends out there that's uh been taken to the uh, people on the outside. What would you like to have if they, if you could have anything right now? What would you like to have? Um, I don't know. You don't know? Would you like to ride your motorcycle today? Yeah. Huh? Tell me you got a motorcycle. I got a motorcycle. <laughs> anyway, say hello to Jim. Say hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. Hello, John. Hello, John. Gary. Gary. Henry. Henry. John. John. There's another John, too. John. You know, Dick. And don't, don't forget Dick. And Dick. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll, we'll talk to these people later, okay? Okay, who, who, who's, your, who's your sister? Huh? Star. Star, okay, you want to come talk a little bit? Do you? Yeah. Okay. Are you happy? Yeah. Thanks for the milk, too. Thanks for the milk, too. Well, you don't drink, do you? No. Who drinks the milk? 
the baby. Okay, thanks for the milk. Come on, Star. Hey, Star. Show, show, show him Daddy's face. <laughs> <laughs> He's my love baby, right? Huh? You love daddy? You love all your friends on the outside? Want to see him soon? Okay, you love God? And you a good girl? Um, say hello to him. Hi. Thanks for the milk. Real loud. What would you like to do today if you could do anything you wanted to? Go on the swing. <laughs> okay. You got anything else to say? Hmm? You don't know? No, it, it's funny looking at a camera, isn't it? Okay. Wait till him goodbye. Oh, how old are you? <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Love you. And then there's our little baby here. Where's Papa at? Ah, Bobby. Come see Dada. Oh, oh. Watch out, Bobby. Oh. Bobby's our little clown here. Wave at the camera, Bobby. Wave at the camera. Wave, there you go. Say hello. Say hello. 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 How old are you, Bobby? Huh? How old are you? One? I'm one year old. What would you like to do today besides drink some of that milk they sent you, huh? Want to drink some milk? Huh? Want some baba? Want some milk? Huh? Want some nana? No. Oh, do you have some milk yet? Huh? Okay. Okay, give day kiss. Give day kiss. Give day kiss. Give day kiss. Thank you. Okay, go mama. Oh. Oh, okay, go to mama, Bobby. No. Over here. Okay, go to mommy. Come on. Love you. Ah. Uh, Okay. Come on, Daylin. Hey, hot rod. Okay. Say hello. Now you gotta wave at the camera there. What's your name? Daylin. Uh huh. Daylin. How old are you? Huh? Three. What's your mama's name? Yeah. Huh? Nikki? Yeah. Come on, you can talk real good. Tell them your ABCs. Why? Now I know my what? Why don't you come and sing with me? <laughs> you want Dick and all them to come and sing ABCs with you, son? Huh? You love your daddy? How much you love me? How much? Huh? Three? You love me three? <laughs> no more than three? Okay. Anyway, can Dad have a kiss? Love you. Go get, go get your sister. Okay. Comes <laughs> pages. Pages. Go see Tata. Hey, pages. What you doing? Hey, just look. Pages. Look, look. Pages, over here. Over here. Oh, you want to play the guitar? Pages. Ah. Those pages now? Pages. Oh, she just, she just turned one too, huh? Yeah, this is our little girl, Pages. She's sweetie, huh? 
She's from uh, she's an Australian baby. Half American, half Australian. You wanna sing? Pages. 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 Clap your hands, Pages. Clap. Clap. Hey, you wanna clap? Clap your hands. Hello, Dick. Hello, John. Hello, Jim. Hello, guys. Uh, she's sweet. Okay, you want to see Mama? You want, you want to sit down here with us for a second? Okay. Uh, you can sit, sit down here. Tell them a little bit about yourself. Uh, how do we meet, Nikki? Um, met in Australia. Okay. About uh, five years ago, Mike. How do you clear? Almost five years ago. Come here. Come here. At my parents' house. And um, that's when I learned the truth in as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I came over to get you, didn't I? Yeah. And who knew about it? My pa everyone knew about it but me. Uh, but I'd, I'd met you two years before, hadn't I? Yeah. And, of course, you had nothing to do with me whatsoever, right? Nothing. I was at college. I was doing um, primary school teaching, um, diploma. I was doing what I wanted to do. Well, you know, we've been teaching, trying to teach some of our friends here in the FBI, the Seven Seals. And uh, the Seven Seals are uh, really pretty deep, aren't they, Nick? Oh, yeah. Very deep. Unlike any other theology the world has ever had to offer. And that's why our little challenge in regards to, you know, the question is, what am I doing? What am I doing with all these children? You know, what's really going on here? Well, you know... God is God, and this nation is supposed to honor and serve God. It says in God we trust in our currency. And these children that I have are for a reason. And unless we really have the ear and the eyes to open ourselves up to be able to read, really read the scriptures and understand the prophecies in a lot of the seven seals, the explanation would seem almost foolish. But anyway, hopefully God's granting us time to be able to open these things up more thoroughly. This is serious stuff here. And I love them. Do you love them too? Pages. Say hi, Tim. Hi, Dick. I spoke to them on the Hello. Hello. Okay. What would you like to do today if you could do anything you want to do? as before. Am I, am I, am I a mean person, Nikki? No. No. Uh, okay, we'll see you later. Mina. Is your picture taken? Come on, Mina. Come over here. Oh. This is Mina. Say hello. Real loud. Hello. Okay. This is Mina Bird. How are you, Mina? Two. You two? You love Daddy? Mama doesn't want to be in the picture, does she? She's worried about how she looks, huh? <laughs> Say hello, Jim. Say, hope all you fellas are doing real good. You love Daddy? You love everybody here? Are you thankful for the milk? Yeah. Thanks for the milk. Yeah. Loud. Hey. For the milk. <laughs> Mina is a talker. I mean, I named every one of these children, and as a person observed the natures of these children, they would see that their names, which are given to them ahead of time, they perfectly fulfill. 
And Mana, she likes to talk like a minor bird, right? A little minor bird. Okay, can you say your ABCs? <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe they'll come and sing with us someday, okay? Okay? Okay, love you, Mina. Okay, bye-bye. Get out. Come on, sit down with me, Kathy. Oh, here's the kicker. This is Chanel. Uh, uh. She wanna, you wanna jump up and down? She's our jumper. This is a very athletic little girl. This is Chanel. And uh, oh, this is about Andrade. I, we tried to tell you that if you would give us time to give you studies, everything I would let you know. Remember that, Isabel? But like a lot of people, people get too hasty. And look, what we do, people would not understand naturally at first. Chanel, look at your... Maybe your grandma might see this film. Say hello. Come on, come look over here. She's always fascinated with me. Oh. <laughs> Okie doke. Okay, so here's your little grandbaby, Isabel. <laughs> She's happy. You know, all of our children here, you've seen them, they're all happy. We have our little combination of child development that no one else in the world has. Can I kiss? <laughs> Can I have my kiss? Oh, oh, careful, careful, that steady's ouchy. That's that's okay. Oh, oh, here she goes. Here, say something. No, we'll hold her. Okay, explain to him while we're in this odd situation here. Oh! That's okay. Oh, go ahead. Well, we believe something that the world needs to know. We learned the seven seals from God, which God gave to his servant, the lamb. The book was given to the lamb to reveal the seals and give it to his servant. He signed and signified by his angel. Read Revelation 4 and 5. Read Revelation 5. Revelation 10, 7. When the seventh angel begins to sound the mystery of God to be heard, as he has declared to his servant the prophet. So, it's simple, isn't it, Kathy? That you got you got your papacy, you got your Lutherans, your Methodists, your Presbyterian, your Baptists. You got all forms of denomination. And hey, they've read the Bible. I'm only I'm only 33 years old now. And, uh, you know, you can check my records of life. I wouldn't have been a good person, but like I say, if I want to go to the papacy or any church, I want to make sure they're connected with God, the true and living God. So the test I've been offering you individuals is very simple. God offers it. If there's a revelation of Jesus beyond Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John's revelation, then John states the revelation pertaining to a God, a book, and there's seven little previews, seven seals, which when there's time no longer, these subjects must be brought to view, as God declared to the prophets. So where in the prophetic writings from Moses to Malachi are the seven seals contained? Now, if you cannot show me, Isaiah and the prophets say nobody can but the Lamb. Well, then if you don't want to learn, if you want me to show you, you don't want to learn. You want to understand these babies. You want to understand such as Zachariah's testimony of smite the shepherd, sheep scattered, my hand upon the little ones. I mean, there are some things that God has concealed in his written word that are to be brought to view right before the end of time that men might see whether they can learn the lesson the Jews never learned. The Jews didn't want to learn nothing. If it wasn't from the hierarchy, if it wasn't from the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees, they didn't want to learn it. So anyway, are we happy, Kathy? Yes. Until, until recently we got shot up. <laughs> Truly. But anyway, this is my family, and uh, no one's going to come in on top of my family and start pushing my family around. It's just not going to happen. It ain't going to happen. 
You know, I think we've uh, made this very clear, especially when we have a God on our side that lets us know of things before time. But anyway, like I said, you don't understand, so you do understand this, though. Innocent. Oh, oh, oh. Okie doke. See you later, Ken. Uh, see one of the holes here? Here's one of them. That look nice? Going up higher. Thank God. This one went out right here. Oh, it's leaking. Just a minute, Is it leaking? Can you see that, Steve? That's too good. You gotta turn more. Oh. It's bleeding. Is it bleeding again? Yeah. Oh, well, well, you can see it anyway. It's kind of painful. Nothing tough guy like me. It's just flesh. It heals. Thanks for the sutures of the day. This thing here, boy, it was it was knocked out. Just clean cut straight through there, and the plow the skin slapped to cut some of the skin back. It all scabbed on the inside. And Can you turn that hand a little bit and see what we got there? Oh, it's. Nothing. Okay. But made all the, the thumb numb here. Come on, Trinity. Daddy's little girl. Here's the here's the controversy, young lady. Uh, oh, she's she's my little baby. Uh, her name is Serenity. Why? She's serene. Very, very serene. Hey, what that is there? The camera. Can you wave at it? Say hello, Jim. Oh. Want to say something? Put your hands down. What do you like for breakfast? Huh? You like ice cream? You love Daddy? Huh? How much you love Daddy? Show him how much. Boy, that's a lot. How come you're how come you so how come you're so serene? Huh? You don't know. How old are you? Huh? Four? Six? Four? Say four. Oh, this many. Put your thumb down. Show them. Show the camera. Okay, that many. What do you want to grow up and be? She wants to grow up and be a woman. Well, that's highly probable. Can I have a kid? I love you. You gonna get your sisters? Okay. This is a little one, right? Come on. Come on. Go, go. Go, Go ahead. She wants her to go first. You want to go first? Come on, you can go first. Okay, go. Come on. Okay. Come on. Okay. Let me see. Come on. Come on, little daddy. These are Serenity's little sisters. Bobby's waving. Bobby's waving. Hey, don't talk real good. Say your ABCs? Yeah. How old are you now? A year and a half. Year and a half? You like, what do you all like? Mama, you like milk? 
Huh? They drink lots of milk. They love milk. Love milk? Huh? They drink, they drink a lot of milk, Serenity? Huh? Yeah, they drink lots of milk. Say, hey, thanks for the milk. Thanks for the milk. Thanks for the milk. Anyway, for the for the Jones clan out there in Waco, if you ever get a chance to see this film, here's their here's their relatives. My babies too. The the rumor's true. But like I say, you don't know the seal, you don't know why. You can always end up misjudging a man. If you don't know the reasons why. Can you want to say something? You want to sing? You want to sing? Did they kiss? Did they have a 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 kiss? Thank you. Did they have a kiss? Did they have a kiss? Kiss each other. Give each other a kiss. Hug each other. Give each other a kiss. Mm -hmm. It's good. Love, love. Okay, do Y'all go with Mama. Okay? Go with Mama? Mama, Mama want to come in the picture? No? Why not? You want to say anything? Okay, do Okay. What's up? You need to get big sister. Okay, come on. Uh, oh. Okay. Uh, may need some help here a little bit. Yeah, I think this one needs to go. Oh. Okay. Oops. Okay, you got her? Oh. Be careful. Uh, huh? Yeah, if you want. Come on, Rach. I mean, you can say something. Bring Bobby. Rachel wants to say something now. Go ahead. Oh, you can tell him. Go ahead. Well, I just wanted to say thanks a lot for killing my dad. He was... Who was he? My dad's name is Terry Jones. He was an unarmed man. And uh, you guys just shot through the door and killed him. Thanks a lot. And thanks for the meal, too. Thanks, man. Ah! <laughs> well, that'll all be taken out later on in the investigations. But you know, there's a lot of sad things in this old world. And you know, it's the FBI is getting involved now, but uh, it's kind of like uh, getting into a fight with a couple of next door neighbors where the, you know, the little brother comes over and whips you and then the big brother comes over to investigate, you know. Anyway, we'll try to work this out. Do you got anything positive to say? We know Perry's made it, you know, but, you know. I just wish it had never happened, that's all. It would have been dealt, dealt with differently. Okay, though. Say bye-bye. Okay, next. Coming in next. Holly. Bad. <laughs> you got some of that good milk in your bottle? Nothing. It's empty. What's it doing? It's empty. Oh, Holly, you're getting so big. This is my little one, Holly. Hollywood. Yeah. What's your mama's name? No, and your mama's name, not you. One look at the camera. Look at Steve. Wave. How old are you, Holly? Huh? How old are you? Two? You love Daddy? Huh? Holly, you love Daddy? Daddy. Daddy.
Huh? You like chicken. Uh, you want to tell him about Daddy's truck? <laughs> okay. Uh, give me a kiss. Say hello. Say thanks for the milk. Thanks for the milk. Thank you. Thanks for the milk. Does the mom want to come in? Mom don't want to come at all, huh? I don't. I, I, okay, she wants to. She wants to pass this one by. Hey, it's freedom of speech here. Freedom of expression. Can't Toys. Oh, toys. Oh, you want some toys? Okay, we'll get some toys in a bit. Okay, go to Mama real quick. She don't want to come in. Uh, who's next? Oh. Bring her. Bring her in. Holly, well, I guess you don't want to leave. Uh, gonna have a hard time. This one, we're fixing to have another one here pretty soon. Uh, oh, she's sleeping. Come on, Stardo. Can you sleep? It's all right. I don't say I don't need those things no more. Uh, my, hey, Stardo? Say hello. You just woke up, huh? Hey, hey, start off. Who's Daddy's kiss? Did he have a kiss? Mom is here. I'm right here. Start off. You're holding to it. Well, tell her who you are, Fish. I am. My name is Aisha. <laughs> Where we find you at, too? Australia. Just try to have some quiet out there. We're trying to make this. So you should be having another one here in about a month, huh? Uh, tell the tell the bed. What was the midwife's name? Julia. Julia Curry. Yeah, she's a good midwife, good lady. Oh, she's excellent, yeah. And, uh, we don't appreciate, if she did, we don't appreciate her turning our files in. Like I say, you know, our religion doesn't hurt anybody, but if we don't, if we don't follow the convictions of our own conscience in the sight of God, then we're not serving God, and that's the way every religion should be. It's just like the papacy during the Dark Ages. When they thought people were heretics, they went in and dealt with them. That was the way they believed. And, you know, we have to all follow our conscience. That's why America is supposed to be a great nation where we can follow our conscience according to our beliefs. A lot of beliefs people have may seem abnormal or strange to other people. That doesn't mean that it's not right, though. But anyway, I'd like to say something to your mother and your father. Well, Here's your grandbabies, Oliver. You know, I wanted to know when I was going to have a kid. Hello. Here she is, and this is the truth, not just a baby. So. I mean, when Elizabeth, like, you know, y'all know it in Australia, y'all know exactly what the doctrine is, and you know it's true, but like you said, you know, you had the right and the choice to make your decisions, and so you're there and we're here. So anyway, anything else you want to say to Jim or anybody, or thanks for the milk? Well, yeah, thank you for the milk. <laughs> Finally, thank Jack Harwell for the milk, especially Jack Harwell. Thank the Waco Sheriff's Department. Great bunch of guys. I mean, I wish they had came out and dealt with us. This would have never happened. You know, I've always had a heart connected to those boys down there. You know, Mr. Thorne and uh, Larry, uh, Larry Abner. Uh, I was waiting for you to come out and go fishing. You and uh, Garcia. 
Johnny Leando? Oh, Johnny Leando, yeah. But, you know, sometimes business and pleasure is hard to mix together. I realize that. But anyway, this is enough for now because some of the others are, uh, are saying they're having a little difficulty here. Here's, uh, here's some of my adopted children. Not, not according to your sister. Come on, come around here, Joseph. Get some help. Hey, Joseph. This is Cyrus's adopted brother, right, Joseph? What do you and Cyrus do a lot of like that y'all like doing? Ride motorcycles. Ride motorcycles together, right? Is that right, son? We need some quiet, please, if it's possible. What kind of motorcycles you got? Stop me. Stop me. Well, no, they're not mini bikes. What, what kind are they? They're Suzuki 50cc. They look just like regular big men's motorcycles, don't they? Right? Yeah. Got them brand new, huh? You were good boys. You and Cyrus and Jake were good boys, huh? No, Scott. Oh, Scott. Okay, we didn't get Jake one yet, did we? Mm -hmm. He's kind of young. Okay, so be sure and tell Scott that you know his motorcycle's still here, and uh, you know, we, no one's riding them. No one gets to ride them because we're all in trouble right now, right? Right, son? And uh, tell them also, what kind of hobbies y'all like to do here? You know what a hobby is, don't you? No. So what, 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 what kind of things do you have? You got any, like, gloves? Yeah. What kind of gloves you got? Boxing gloves. Boxing gloves. You like to box? Yeah. Yeah. What is it? You got baseball gloves? Yeah. Like to play baseball? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we had some excitement lately. Yeah. Tell them what, tell them what happened with, when just recently when you, when you were here. Wow. Loud and clear. Tell, tell them what's there. Wow. Wow. in your room? Yeah. How many? A lot. What was, what did you, what did your mom tell you to do? What were you doing? We were getting, we got on the floor. Mm -hmm. Were you scared? Yeah. Did you crying to God? Yeah. Did you know what was happening? Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. What's scary? Wasn't that scary, son? <laughs> Y'all didn't even know what you, tell me what happened. Well, me and we were up in the room and my mom was talking to her and then my mom was looking out the window and she saw this car coming up and she told Neil like that and then, and then they got here and then they started shooting them once they get down so we got into the bed and we didn't even know what was going on. You got bullet holes in your room too, huh? Yeah. You don't know how many. Okie doke. So we're brave though. We still believe in God, right? Yeah. Okay, and we're trying to work this out to where we can guarantee our securities and your securities and try to resolve and see who's at fault here, right? Yeah. Okay, do you still love us? Yeah. You want your sisters come in? You love me? Am I good daddy? Yeah. Good. Okay, do all right, where's, where's little taco at? What's your name anyway? Joseph. Joseph, how old are you? Eight. Eight, okay. Love you, Joseph. Talk to you later. Uh-oh, there's my little time taco shell. Uh, I have all the children that have been here, though. Uh, taco, tell them about it. Tell them about it. We were in a room and all of a sudden my mom saw some two cars coming and she, she looked out and she saw two cars coming and they were coming in real fast and she was like, whoa, and she, she sat in the outside on the floor so um, she looked out of the window and she goes, Get on the floor, so we both got on the floor. Were you scared? Did you hear me outside talking? You remember hearing me talking? Hmm. Okay. 
And what happened? There was a bullet that came right in between the carpet and landed right underneath Joseph's stomach, right? Yeah, your feet. No, your feet, huh? <laughs> and it, it didn't hit anybody. It just went. It went through the wall and went through the carpet, didn't it? It landed at your feet, huh? No, it went through and it stopped in the middle of the carpet and the wood. Oh my. It was exciting, huh? What's, what's your name, Taco? What's your real name? Isaiah. Isaiah, how old are you? Five. You love Daddy? I'm, ado I'm you adopted you, right? Yeah. You love, you love Cyrus and everyone else here? You love the boys and girls here? Yeah. You want to say hello to anybody out there, the kids that left? Yeah. Say hello, wave to them. Hi. Tell, tell them, make sure that they're taking good care of them. Make sure that taking good care of them. Okay. Anything else you want to say? Maybe you might ask them if you can have some ice cream too, huh? Mm -hmm. Ask them. Can I have some ice cream? <laughs> a little bribery there. Mm -hmm. you know, you're, right now you're considered a, a big terrorist, you know, and you can demand some important things like a, a, an ice cream or something, you know. Maybe they might adhere to you. Okay. Okay, love you. And let Crystal come and talk? Okay, though. This is little Crystal. She's my little taco girl. Love, Daddy? Huh? That's one thing a lot of kids will tell you about me, and that's that uh, a child's a child. There's one thing about our children you'll find out is that they're not fakes. They're taught respect. They're taught faith in God. They may not know every doctrine. They may not know everything that we know. But they're taught that authority is based in maturity. They're taught to respect people. And this, this kind of, uh, if I might say, this kind of uh, refuge of these so-called psychologists, especially this lady out of Dallas. These people saying that our children are abnormal, they're going through some kind of shock. You know, love is a power which allows a human being to have a subdued thought and a subdued reaction to anything. And we need to understand that what may be considered normal to one may not be considered normal to another. But our children, they're not, they're not disrespectful. Our children are not over demanding. They're just trying to get along and they're trying to be able to act and direct their steps as you would have them to. And I think y'all need to really sit back and stop and look at the situation. I think that all of you who got kids in the supermarkets who run and scream and who eat all this junk food all the time and all this candy, I think that you people that have all these children who in school do not want to be spanked by somebody else or are always rebuttal and want to fight against somebody in their authority. You see, I, I think if you look at the children, you'll see the actual product of the parent. And, uh, you know... Mrs. Coon and all these people that are the social workers, you know, y'all should learn a lesson out of this. Our children is our product that we were offering to society. And, uh, you know, they're totally different than what we've seen the majority of society trying to offer to society. You know, our children know how to respect, they know how to be mindful, they know how to do right because they see it here. They see it in the parents, we subject ourselves to God, we're obedient unto God, we follow the pattern of, uh, that God would have us to do, just like Abraham. God says to Abraham that he's coming with him because he'll direct his family after him. There's no hypocrites, there's no say, don't do as I do, do as I say, routines practiced here. So anyway, we live for one thing, and that's the betterment of tomorrow's world, and that's where our children come in at. And uh, you people go and think what you want to, but... Uh, the proof is in the pudding, you know. Just don't pervert our kids. That's all I'm asking. Don't pervert our kids. God will hold you in contempt. So you want to say hello? Thanks for the milk. Can you say that? Say it. Thanks for the milk. Crystal doesn't talk very much, but when she does, she talks really well. Hey, you love me? Have a kiss? Thank you. Okay, hop up. Does anybody have anything they want to say? Huh? 
and there, there's a lot of other children here, but we're just trying to get, you know, some of these, you know, so you can know that, that we're, um, we're doing fine. And also I'd like to uh, remind Linda Campion, who I believe still lives in Dallas, or Richardson area, daughter of Dick Campion, that uh, no matter how this ends up, you know, I still love Shane Nicole, and uh, I've been putting money back to the side for her, and uh, everything that I taught Linda still sticks. And this is something that this whole nation is going to have to learn. Whether they're going to learn by being sober and listening, or they're going to learn the hard way. I mean, we want to be wish the best of you guys, the best of luck. And uh, we ourselves, I said, are waiting on God. We want to resolve this as much or more so than you do. But we want everyone to stop, and, and we're listening, and we're looking, and we want to realize, and we want, we want to be convinced It is realized that, that, that uh, political power, the ATF, has done something seriously wrong. I'd like to uh, very quickly show you a few things here from uh, Cliff Sellers, an artist from England. We, we do custom-made guitars. What was uh, when we met him? What was he going to be? Oh, well, Cliff, uh, Cliff is going to be a ministerial student for the Seventh Adventist Church. When he found out they didn't have no truth, when I showed them the prophecies and all that, and all the Adventists had was a bunch of hollering about the Pope and all that. I mean, you know, the Pope, the Pope may be a nice guy, you know? But the thing of it is, you can't be just hollering about somebody else all the time. you got to present doctrine out of a book, and the Adventists don't have that. Them and their LNG wife. But anyway, here's the, uh, got it? Uh, can you tilt it, uh, the neck down a little more like that right there? I'm going to zero in on it right here. We get out of this, we'd like uh, Steve Vai to have this guitar. Matter of fact, it's taken from one of his uh, Ibanez uh, endorsement pictures. Got it? Yep. Here. This is the uh, notorious Psalms 45 guitar. A lot of people think it's kind of sensual. But no more sensual than the Song of Solomon. For those who have enough nerve to read the Song of Solomon, Psalms 45, the prophecy about the marriage of the Lamb in the latter days. A lot of people, when they read Psalms 45, try to spiritualize it away, but nonetheless, it's one of the seals. It's the first seal, and recapturing and confirmed and verified in uh, Revelation 19. All the prophets talk about this event. Yes. Okay. Some beautiful custom work. We actually had several an illustration of what God is going to do to the last generation and all the false religions who misrepresented his word. So, you know, let's pray to God that we can resolve this in doctrine and in truth. And while I'm allowed to uh, regain strength, Possibly we can uh, resolve some of these things. But I basically don't have anything really to say except, you know, God grant us all time. I've got a question. Yeah. You've got about so oh, maybe 12 to 15 minutes left. Uh, the family that you just showed that is yours. Is that family mentioned in the scriptures? Anything to do with the seventh seal? Steve, you answer that. <laughs> Y'all answer that. I mean, did I just, is my great, wonderful looks something that just women can't resist? <clears throat> huh? It has everything to do with the seal. It has everything to do with the seal, you know? But we here are not stupid people. Does the scripture not talk about stumbling blocks from the sure, beginning? Sure, stumbling blocks where God's a rock of offense and a stone of stumbling. Peter says to those who believe not the word. Take it from Isaiah, referring to Messiah. I'm not sure, Lord, to give me a for signs and wonders in Israel. I mean, can I have a little feedback? Uh, are these things not just written by one, but all the prophets? All the prophets. 
too conclusive. But 2,000 years ago, hey, who believed in Christ's doctrine? A man had to die. No one would believe what he had to say. So is there a lesson to be learned by looking back at the history of the prophets that came contrary to what people looked for? Were they they ever... killed Isaiah, they killed Hoshea, they killed Zechariah. And Jesus came to say in Matthew 23 to the Jews, Woe unto you that believe not all the prophets have spoken. So, you know, today it's all together just totally uh, disregarded. Just another religious fanatic, just another religious group. You know, it's not against the law. I want to thank Sean Ems out of Dallas. I want to thank Charlie. Uh, CDN out of, um, of, um, uh, where's he at, Steve, located at? CD, you know, Charlie, uh, CD, and, anyway, it's, it's down there, uh, Odessa, Midland, Odessa, you know. I want to thank, uh, Henry McMahon, uh, Waco Pistol Parlor. You know, it's not against law to buy a firearm. It's not against law to, to buy anything that they sell at a gun show. And when this is all resolved, you know, hey, yellow sheet is legal. An accusation is not. And bringing these tanks and stuff around here, I tell you what, being an American first, I'm the kind of guy that I'll stand in front of a tank, you can run over me, but I'll be biting one of the tracks. No one's going to hurt me or my family. That's, 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 that's American policy here. You could have arrested me any day as I jog up and down this road. You could have arrested me going to town or going to Walmart. Waco is going to bear witness against the ATF. The two agents across the street over here, uh, Robert Gonzalez, I love the guy. I was honest with him. I brought him into my home. He was going to stay here for two weeks. All this stuff you may, you guys may want to avoid and deny. You know? You know, he wanted to tour around a place. I promised him a tour. He could have talked to any of these guys around here, anybody. He was free to come and go as he chose. And I do not appreciate it, and never will I ever appreciate somebody coming here with two helicopters and cattle, cattle trailers and all that. And uh, pushing people around with guns. Hey, I'll meet you at the doorstep any day. You know, and somebody will get hurt. If you want to keep playing that game, I'm talking to you. Somebody's going to get hurt. Because this ain't America anymore when the ATF has that kind of power to come into anybody's home and kick doors down and things like that. Now, I, I heard, I, and I do understand, someone reminded me of this, I do understand that one of the officers says his gun went off on accident. And that, you know, that was just like a signal and all that, you know. But look, beside the point, ATF, you boys are wrong. Your practices, your habits, yeah. Drug dealers, fine. You know, but even there's always a question. If there's any question whatsoever, the kids or women are involved, damn you, I tell you what, you keep your damn gun in your holster. You send a couple of big, brave invincible kind of men, you let them knock on the door. If they're so damn involved to where they can risk their lives for the name of the law, then send them up bulletproof, put them in some kind of uh, night armor or whatever, and let them knock on the door and ask the questions first. But no one's going to expect me, when they come busting in on my door with guns drawn and pointed in the air, and someone fired me, that I'm going to lay down and die for anybody. This just ain't going to happen in this country. God speaks to me. I have a message to present. You may not believe that. If you don't believe that, then believe this. Irrespective of God speaking to me. You see this here? See, this is my family. It may not be like your family. You know, it may not be like your family. This one here... You know, he's my family too, right, Joseph? Yeah. Tell him, tell him, you know. Look in that camera and tell him what you think about it. Who's treated you good? David. You know, do you mind that, son? Huh? Do you love Joseph? Your best buddies? Yeah. 
Yeah. You too, Damon. So you know, you guys, you guys, you have it. You do it your way. I do it my way. You got to argue with me. You catch me on the side of the road somewhere, and you come and argue with me. You come point guns in the, in the direction of my wives and my kids. Damn it! I'll I'll meet you at the door any time. And I'm sorry some of you guys got shot. But uh, hey, God will have to sort that out, won't He? So we're gonna send this tape out now. And I've, I'm leaking in the back here. I gotta get this taken care of. And uh, I'm hoping to get stronger. And maybe we can send more tapes as issues develop. I do thank you guys. Sheriff Harwell, God bless you. And, you know, thanks for getting into the milk. And uh, what can I say? You just, um, they call me a rambling man, don't they? Anyway, God bless, and we'll sign off, Steve.